So the structure of the DNA itself is a very important step in gene regulation. So we'll call this chromatin remodeling. And this is just basically going to involve changes to either the nucleosome or the DNA. So when we're talking about proteins associated with the DNA, typically we're going to be talking about histones. And there are several different types of histones. Most histones are going to contain, um, or the normal histones will be two, H2A and H3. There are also variant histones that can also facilitate gene transcription. Modification to these histones in the form of acetylation. Remember, the proteins are going to be pretty much positively charged, and that is going to be because they're associated with the negatively charged DNA. You can change the charge of this, you can increase the charge, you can decrease the charge um, of these nucleosomes, and they're catalyzed by various enzymes, these HATs, or histone acetyl transferase enzymes. And this is typically associated with increased transcription. These histones can also be modified by phosphorylation and methylation, and these are two ways to control any type of proteins, not just histones. So to look at this, let's look a little bit more closely. Here's the DNA. It's associated with the histones, very tightly wound in this particular case. Um, you can slide this down. This sliding would expose DNA, and then RNA polymerase or the transcription machinery can find the start of the gene. You can also alter the DNA path. So instead of being wound around and, and folding down here, um, the DNA can be physically pulled off of the nucleosome. So maybe it's half wrapped around here. You can also remodel that nucleosome, that, that core particle of it. In this case, you can, instead of the eight um, subunits here, you can see there's four and four. And so you form this dimer instead. And so it's just a little bit more loosely associated with this particular region. So when we're talking about this chromatin remodeling, we're talking about repositioning or removal of those nucleosomes on the DNA. These repositioned nucleosomes make the regions of the chromosome accessible to the transcription regulatory proteins, and we'll talk more about those in a little bit. But they're going to be things like transcription activators and, of course, RNA polymerase, too. There are several different remodeling complexes, but the SWE SNF, or the SWI SNF, is probably one of the best studied remodeling complexes. And one of the reasons why is because if you can understand how this global gene regulation is happening, you really can control the whole cell, right? Because without this particular process happening, you can shut down global gene, gene transcription. So DNA methylation uh, is typically going to be something that's associated with decreased gene expression. So when you have regions of C's and G's, and it's particularly the cytosine of the C's and G's, methylation can happen there. Um, sometimes it'll happen at these CPG islands, they call it. Many of these happen to be within the promoter regions. So if this methylation is there, um, it can literally block the transcription factors, the RNA polymerase from coming and binding to that promoter region. They can also repress transcription by binding to the transcription factors of RNA and maybe blocking the path so they can't leave, so RNA polymerase can't come in, and so on.